10 years ago, I started working on a version of this PC and Mac game that would run in a web browser. Why? Because it's awesome. Let's take a look. This is my third browser-based game project in 20 years. I always have fun and learn things along the way, and the results are fun to share. I tend to spend extra time on the details. Armor Alley has been the most complex game I've done to date. In 2013, I said I'd never get to multiplayer networking. I found some time, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. First, some history. Let's take a look at the original. Here's a classic Macintosh and the Armor Alley game from 1990. This is version 1.1, and one of the new features at the time was 8-bit color. Wow, so up to 256 colors, which that's a lot more than the PC version, which is just 4-bit, 16 colors. So I definitely pulled and reviewed and pulled these sprites. These sprites are much nicer. The graphics are much nicer in this version. So here you see the menu of the battles you can play. I'm going to try Super Bunker. And yeah, here we go. This is the original game. So helicopter automatically turns. You can click to change direction. And the controls are almost identical. Three bombs to take out a tank. Just like my version, right? <laughs> There's your missiles. Hey, where are you going? Oh no, I died. And so ordering inventory here. T for tank, etc. Uh, but you can only order one thing at a time. So... I feel like I added a very nice modern upgrade where you can order queue up multiple units. Makes a big difference. Convenience. Here's Armor Alley on DOS. I believe this is 4-bit 16 color. And it looks like I've got a corrupt high scores file, but never mind that. I'm uh, showing the, what does the network game look like? So you could play over a modem. And you could dial, call a friend, or you could host. You, you know, phone rings and you answer. And you set your baud rate, your telephone number, and your modem commands. I actually used to play this over modem back in the day. And then the direct com port is you'd connect a null modem cable, serial cable, between two computers. And what's apparently, what's really fascinating is that this game, allegedly, you could play PC connected to Mac. I believe it was over the... the Apple, Apple Talk Network back in 1990. So cross-platform multiplayer, that's that's really impressive uh, for in terms of compatibility back in the day. And uh, UI is slightly different on the PC. I decided to just go with showing the digital status all the time rather than those, those graphic bars. But yeah, hopefully this looks familiar. Uh, there's... The tips that scroll by, I could change the type, the fonts I've used a little bit uh, to be a little more legible, but yeah, trying to not take up too much screen real estate. Sound effects, pretty lo-fi. Again, it was 1990, and I do find some of these colors. This The PC version was the version that I played a lot as a kid, so I'm very familiar with, this is my, arguably the version of the game I know best, but the Mac, Version 1.1 introduced 8-bit color, so it definitely has the edge on graphics quality. And it's just certain things like the bunkers, I think on the Mac, just look uh, more... It's a nicer orange instead of that kind of garish orange-yellow combo. Yuck. Uh, of course, I didn't know that till I saw the Mac version. I thought, oh man, those are so much nicer. So, what else is there? Uh, you might be thinking, hey... What's up with the UI? Like, this kind of looks like a Macintosh, right? And so I remembered playing this as a kid and thinking, hang on, am I inside, like, a Mac right now? Or, like, a Macintosh emulator? Because what's with the black and white and the blinking selection? Like, I knew that from... That's a Mac thing. And the scroll bars, right? So whoever did the PC port of this, because I think it was a Mac game first... Basically, you just poured it over the, the windows and the UI and the buttons. And that's kind of hilarious. Right? Just a little bit of random 
history. So, yeah, it's a PC game, but kind of looks like it's on a Mac. So that's what I set out to emulate. Here's a quick look at my project over the last 10 years. So my first prototype had the original game at original scale, and you could pretty much scroll and shoot and drop bombs, and that was about it. And later that year, I had a playable game, sound effects and scrolling and basic logic. And then I continued adding over time more units and sounds and polishing up the details, queuable inventory, uh, tweaking the UI, making it minimally playable on mobile, constantly working on performance. And then in 2022, I really got I think, the game to a solid place where lots of detail, great performance. And this year I've really gone full out and I added everything that I could from the original game. There's also one more thing which I might have to detail in a separate video. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> it's a fun one. Here's what the tutorial looks like on a desktop browser. So if you're not familiar, the point of the game is to get a van to the enemy base. You build up convoys from over here and they go to the right and eventually, hopefully, you get a van to the other side. And the enemy's doing the same thing. So you build convoys and defend them on the way to their destination. So the tutorial is meant uh, as an interactive sort of cut down version of the game. And it teaches you each step that I think is important to learn in order. So the first thing is, well, how to fire weapons, shift and control. And so on desktop, you use keyboard for the most controls and things. So once you've completed a step, it moves on to the next one, repair, return to your landing pad, repair, refuel. Oh no, bad guys, okay. Now you gotta go take out a incoming convoy. So certain weapons are more effective than others. Three bombs will take out a tank, eight gunfire, and then sometimes the van will just get taken out uh, via shrapnel. And shrapnel's good. Sometimes, sometimes it's not good. Depends on which way it's coming. So you need to pick up some infantry. You press the I key and you'll notice up here there are the keyboard controls for your various uh, units you can order. One infantry always gets sort of sacrificed to your end bunker. That's where your funds uh, store. Kind of like your bank. Now that we've picked up infantry, we got to go drop one uh, off at the local bunker to take it over. So space bar to drop from the air. Uh, while landed, you can drop one on the ground as well. From the air, sometimes the parachutes don't always open, so you'll want to keep that in mind. So as you go through some of these steps, I do apologize, are a little bit long, but this is good information, uh, strategic stuff that will come in handy later, especially when you're playing the real thing. So while you're here, don't forget to have a little fun. You know, learn how to fire the missiles, crash into some things blow some things up. Um, there will be plenty of opportunities to do more of that in the real thing. Here's what the tutorial looks like on an iPhone 14. So the game has been really revamped to work nicely with touch controls and on touch devices. And ideally the experience should be parallel to desktop in terms of features and sound effects and functionality. One key difference is that the controls are overlaid now uh, for touch, so you can see the green circles around the gun icon and the bombs. And so that's how you use those controls on touch screens. Otherwise, the game uh, and every all the features and everything work the same. So continuing with the uh, tutorial, you now see, okay, take out the convoy. And one last thing I want to show is how you order inventory. So the inventory controls are put behind this little flashing icon here. I do need to fix the alignment on that. So we'll tap that. Now you see, and these controls will hang around for a few seconds. Tap for infantry. And now we pick up the infantry and tutorial continues. So we'll fly over to the nearest bunker, drop a few, claim the bunker. The rest goes from there. I will leave it to you to explore the tutorial. Alright, lots of options for the game. So I've I've added some new things. Get a slider for volume, for music while you're on the landing pad. That's another story. Environmental effects. So you now have the option to turn on rain. Sometimes it'll happen during the game in certain scenarios. 
Uh, extra fancy explosions, that's sort of the confetti. Live graveyards are basically when units can take it out. Sometimes there's a little tombstone to mark them. If you turn on all of these, it can become quite busy and sometimes block, like crowd over uh, landing pads and things affecting visibility. So I recommend you start with just helicopters and if you want to have some fun, try turning these on. If you turn these off at any time during the game, those things disappear. So it's okay to experiment. Uh, general UI options haven't changed much, but basically it's like showing these controls and hints up here and the, uh, the, yeah, the hints that scroll by and whatnot. This virtual stupidity stuff is like a whole theme, sound, path, and theme. I had a ton of fun putting this together. It's a, I consider it a fan-based work. Uh, 500 plus sounds from CD-ROM from the 1990s. Not mine. I asked for uh, forgiveness, not permission. I really think, though, if you try this, it can be a whole lot of fun. Basically, they take turns playing the game and they'll make commentary on how you're doing. And I've had so much fun playing it and laughing at some of the scenarios that come up. And I've had some great early feedback from people as well. So people who grew up in the 90s who played Armor Alley, who also like Beavis and Butthead, it's, it's a good combo, I'm just saying. <laughs> now, gameplay options and traffic control are basically modern updates, like updates to the game logic or the, the features on top of the original that I added. So, modern missiles, whether engineers can repair bunkers, rob the bank. And then there were a couple of things that I thought were kind of, not bugs, but like a tank might blow up a bunker trying to shoot at an infantry behind a bunker. So, you can fix that by just saying, allow the tank gunfire to go through the bunker, hit the infantry. The traffic control is a similar thing where it, prevents tanks and other vehicles from kind of piling up on one another because it allows vehicles to stop while someone in the front is stopped to fire. And so that just helps with, I think, the overall uh, the gameplay. Okay, I'd like to show one of the actual levels of the game. So all of the original game levels should be in here. And I've also included all of the original network levels. Now, these normally only showed up when you had a network game set up. But a lot of these I found are really fun to play without a network connection. And some of them are really challenging, like th these ones in here. But uh, anyway, I want to show Cakewalk. This is like the first one, the first level you'd play in a normal sort of campaign uh, mode. And if the name implies anything, hopefully it shouldn't be too hard for you to take on. So sometimes it's great. You get a convoy to start, but so does the enemy. So you got to get to work taking out those tanks and the vans. Now you can let you, these units battle it out. Uh, but you'll notice that if you leave a tank by itself, more often than not, it's not going to last against one of the computers. One on one, the CPU tanks have a slight advantage on the gunfire rate. So that can be a bit of a challenge. So don't assume that your stuff is just going to plow on through. Now, I do think there's a bug here with the enemy helicopter where it's just making a beeline for our base, and that seems like a bug. So hopefully by the time you see this, I've gotten that patched up. So once I've cleared out the first oncoming stuff, I like to order T-I-M-E, sometimes just repeatedly, tank, infantry, van, engineer, and then sometimes V for van but it's still early in the level, so I don't want to assume that we're going to get a fan all the way over just yet. Now, I just fired a missile to try to get that tank, and I was lucky I got it in time. So on the radar here, you can see there's a tank, there's the helicopter. There was the helicopter, right? Um, the yellow, uh, these sort of old, are their balloons, and the way to know is something friendly or not. Uh, the balloons are always yellow, so sorry, that's not helpful. Uh, that's how the original game was. Enemy units on the radar are shown in yellow, and there's also the little badge pointing, you know, to the left here. So I know that this, if I hit this, I'm going to die. And we know from the tutorial, too, it's not friendly. So one infantry will own it. Now it's ours. Yay. If I had another one pass by, uh, infantry repair balloons when they um, pass by a bunker. Now, okay, enemy chopper's gone after a balloon, and they normally have a couple different modes. They try to target one of your tanks. They'll chase you. Uh, what else? They'll try to hide in the cloud. There's a few different sort of 
tactics they take. Now I've set off a uh, missile launcher here. Now I've also added a couple bonus features. I got this banana idea from the uh, Team 17 game Worms. I'm sure that is familiar to some folks. They had, you know, doves or birds that blew up and all kinds of fun stuff. So I got inspired and I, I worked in heat seeking bananas and rubber chickens. So if you, you push B for banana and C for chicken, and you can see it in the menu there. And then if you uh, press the key and hold, it will launch the nearest thing. Now I'm almost out of fuel, so I'm gonna hit delete and bail out my pilot and just say, all right, I give up. At least we can get an infantry on the ground. Now, I just wanted to point out what happened there. So this is your end bunker. This is like your bank. That's where the funds are. The funds are up here and that's what you use to order um, inventory. And that's how you build convoys. And funds are earned over time. And the further you are out into enemy territory, the more funds you earn. So you can earn, I think it's every, I forget what I said it to one, like every 30 seconds or something. Um, the, you know, earn funds timer fires. And when you're about halfway, you earn two. And then further out and in, into enemy territory, you earn three at a time. So, oops. Uh, it, there's good reason to be further out there. However, you notice that there's greater risk. It takes more fuel, it takes more time to get out there. There's no, I don't think this level has one. There's no landing pad in the middle of the battlefield for you to uh, refuel, recharge, etc. So, it, yeah, it's a bit of a trek getting out here. And that's how the original game was done. My brother had an idea where he said, you know, it'd be nice if, if, if and when there's a, uh, landing pad in the middle, it'd be great to be able to sort of save, remember, respawn here. Uh, I like that idea. It's an option. It would change the game a bit, but kinda, it'd be an interesting option to have because, yeah, it sure saves time. Uh, now, I missed this while blabbering, but we now control... Oh, and now we just lost it. Okay, so in earlier, easier versions of the game uh, with the difficulties, if you take over all the bunkers, then you own them then enemy production, that is their convoys, um, stop, which is great. Because that means this really becomes a cakewalk in the sense of you just have to now defend your stuff from the enemy helicopter and get a van uh, over to the, to the base. And that's it. Game over. You win. Now, I'm at the enemy base, and this is kind of dangerous territory because the enemy's respawning here. And I can do, you know, kind of cheap things like spam the base and... Try to just toss bombs on the landing pad. Not that I would ever do that, of course. Um, I'm going to try to steal some money by dropping an infantry on the end bunker. I missed. But if I'm able to get an infantry in there, uh, in the door, between where the guns, like, so the guns don't fire, then I can steal funds up to 20 at a time, which is, which is awesome. So there's another little risk reward. Uh, another feature I've added is unit uh, recycling. So the idea is... Uh, oh, okay, I, a bunch of stuff is happening. Okay, so we got an engineer. This is another feature I added. Engineers can now rob the bank. So the risk reward is if an engineer makes it all the way over to the end bunker, where like the bank, and the bank has... Uh, it's kind of like super bunkers where they, they're guns. But if a tank has neutralized the end bunker by shooting at it first, tank passes through and that thing is now unarmed and an, inf and an engineer hits it, they can steal all the funds. And once, um, once a unit passes all the way across the battlefield, and I got this idea from chess, kind of like when your pawn makes it to the other end, it get, you can now have a queen and really do some damage. If... Um, a unit makes it all the way across the battlefield. I think in the old game, they just, the original game, they just disappeared. And what I thought is you should be rewarded. So what happens is you get double the cost returned. So a tank costs four, you get eight. Uh, infantry are five. Engineers, I think, are five. You get ten. You know, missile launchers, three. You get six, etc., etc. And so that's another great way to build up uh, a lot of funds. Now, I'm going to see if I can 
missile this guy down now. Again, the enemy chopper's not very smart. Um, <laughs> it'll basically just try to line itself up with you and then fire. I'm gonna go try dropping stuff again. This is dangerous. Oh no, that's... that's that. Now, okay, I've blabbered on enough. I more or less have this level wrapped up um, in the bag, per se, but it's going to take time to get a van all the way over there. So I'm going to leave that to you, perhaps, to take on. But now, if you haven't done this before, now you've basically seen the mechanics of the game and, and how it works. There's much more, um, but this is just the first level. So I hope it's been interesting. So if you want to play a network game, here's how it goes. You click network, invite a friend, and uh, where it works, this will copy a link to your clipboard. I don't think it works here. I haven't got SSL yet on this new domain, so hang tight. Hopefully by the time that you see this, it'll be working. So I'm going to load this up, this link over here. Our friend is going to load up this. And uh, we're now connected, hooray. So now we have a little network chat. So I can say hello, and I'm gonna say remote player. And I'm gonna say, I am I'm me. And then we can say, so now you're connected and you can chat about options. I do apologize for the scroll bars, by the way. A long story, CSS, they don't work everywhere. Work in progress. So there are certain sections that have the little network icon, and these are now shared. So if I click here, I want to play co-op, then, you know, the remote host, my friend, sees it too. So this is sort of the cooperative uh, part of the game before you play together. You get to choose the level you want to play, and then you can also set um, things like your difficulty. And once you've agreed to settings, then the game can begin. There are certain elements that are your own. So I can have it raining over here and my friend doesn't need to, for example. Um, certain elements are shared further down because these affect gameplay. So let's say I'm happy with these settings. I just click ready and it says here waiting for host. Now it's like, hey, your friend's ready to go. Let's go. So I can review. If I make a change, then it tells the remote they have to agree to the changes again. And now it's my turn to be like, okay, let's start the game. So, in fact, I want to say, yeah, you know what? Let's do us versus a computer. And uh, I'm going to say I'm ready. The remote can review and go, oh, ah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, great. And here we go. Now, I'm not going to record all this because... I'm at 4K and this is going to kill my computer performance here. The screen recording is going to fail. Um, or be, The screen recording will be slow. But, just to get an idea, there's two helicopters flying around, co-op, and you can type enter to chat. Uh, I tried to make this somewhat logical. Um, where you can you can talk to each other and hopefully not uh, distract yourself with the keystrokes. So things should stay in sync, ideally uh, retrofitting this game to be network aware and network playable was a pretty significant challenge, but I have to say when I got this all working and just seeing it working reasonably well has been amazing. It's been awesome and a lot of fun and just again an early beta testing and feedback from friends, uh, it's been quite good. People have been quite happy with how the game has performed. So I don't think it's going to be showing it well enough here, but these little blinking, those are like modem lights, uh, like taken from the Windows 9598XP lights.exe. And I, I couldn't resist when there's network activity that is in your helicopter flying around, like it's bombs or it's gamma or something. The lights actually blink showing transmitting and receiving packets. There's a little bit of timing information here as well. So um, this shows the delta in terms of frames, uh, how far how far ahead or how far behind you are relative to your friends. So because this is in a browser, things can be throttled 
It could be lag, ping time, plays a big role. But I should do a whole other section on the network stuff, but basically your computer performance and network can affect the game uh, fairly significantly. So if I open a new tab over here, we now see that our friend is clearly falling behind on frames. So there's five seconds at 30 frames a second, growing to six. Now if I come back, the game will try to catch up uh, to resync, but this is really tricky stuff. Uh, I actually, there might be a bug here. So I'm trying to catch up by skipping frames, uh, but it's slow to catch up probably because I'm doing 4K and screen recording at the same time. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what folks experience is like with this in the wild. Uh, but my experience playing this with friends generally has been quite good. If you're ping time and this is round trip, so that's to and from the remote, ideally average, is 16, 30 milliseconds or less, your input lag is going to be pretty small and you won't really notice. So the game delays the input. I'm not using rollback code, just delay. So if it takes half a second for your message, your input to get to your remote because you're playing someone across the world, then you'll move your mouse and your helicopter won't be as responsive as you'd like. But the benefit is that your friend sees you move at the same time you do. So things stay more in sync that way. I could go on more about this, but I've already chat enough. That's probably good for now. That's networking. I finally added a level editor to this game, something I tend to do with these sort of projects at some point. So you can choose a level presently and then click editor and it will use that level data as the basis for which you start. So big disclaimer here, work in progress. You know, I've got this sort of Mac classic UI thing going on. Big wall of text explaining what to do. Um, you know, you can drag the windows around. I'm going to try to explain by showing and I'll leave the text up as well. So this looks like the actual, the original game, uh, but you notice the hand here, so you can click. Uh, I should mention this doesn't work on mobile yet. I, it should work, but desktop only for now. So you can drag the world around and you'll notice in the radar area, it now looks like a scroll bar because that's what it is. So you can click and drag that around to really uh, zoom around as well. And so you can kind of get a lay of the land and figure out where things are. So if you want to move something, uh, objects now kind of highlight on hover and then on click, you can just click and drag. And if you want to, you can move. And then if you want to grab a couple things, you hold the option or uh, command key, sorry, command key. Maybe Windows, I haven't figured out the meta key, the Windows key. I haven't, I'm not sure if this works yet. But anyways, you can create a selection marquee this way as well too. And uh, then let go and then click and drag and you can move multiple things around. And the buildings and the balloons and the clouds and all that can be moved as well. Basically the whole game is just a bunch of, there's an object at X, Y, and the game engine takes it from there. So if you want to remove something, you can click or select the thing and then hit the delete key and then it's gone. If you uh, want to get rid of a building, certain buildings, they explode. So if you delete them, there's nice animation, make it a little fun. Uh, let's go back to the, the base here. Here's a dead turret. It's not clear, but that little sort of cookie thing, that's a, it's a dead turret. You can delete those or, and I see here's the uh, sort of palette with all the keys and what you're gonna add. So let's say you wanna create a turret over there. So S, and I apologize, I had to map the keys somehow. So S for structures. So if I, S, we see we have a bunker, super bunker, turret, or landing pad. And then using the arrow keys, well, uh, sorry, the bracket keys here, I can cycle through those items. So once I have turret, I can now, you see this line has appeared, I can click 
And there we go. There's the turret. And I can place as many of those and, you know, select and move them around as I want. Now, if I'm like, ah, you know what? That's too many. Get rid of one. Now, sometimes you want to place a dead turret for your engineers to repair. So it has, some of these have a couple states. I'm getting, this is a little bit advanced. So let's go back to the, to the basics here. Let's just say, I just want to place some tanks. So your units here, just like in the game, M-T-V-I-E. So if I want to place a tank, push T, active. Think of this like a Photoshop or something. You're choosing your brush and now you're just painting on the landscape. So, you know, there's a happy little tree like Bob Ross right there. We don't make, we don't make mistakes here. We have happy accidents, right? So I got my tanks, got some trees. You know what? I want missile launcher M. I want a van V. I want infantry I. I want a couple infantry. <laughs> let's uh, throw some engineers back here too. Maybe two of them. And sometimes these will overlap. So I do apologize if it's a little bit glitchy. This is really early. I basically made this editor so that I could decorate the landscape uh, for the levels from the original game. I had the positioning of all the units and the buildings, but I didn't have the terrain items. So for example, uh, the grass or the gravestones or what have you. So I had to go and kind of take screenshots and screencasts of the original and do flybys and then compare and then go, okay, it looks like the grass is, you know, here. So that's how you end up. I spent a lot of time. I still have to do all the network levels, come to think of it. Uh, so let's see what else we got. These are all the different sprites. And you can spend lots of time on this. I wouldn't spend too, too much. Airborne things, you got two options. There's uh, clouds and then balloons. You'd think click in the sky to place a cloud. And this is, I'm trying to debate how to do this, but right now, Things only appear when you click down here to place them, and then they show up kind of at a random spot, so I apologize for that. And there are three different types of cloud, and in fact, there they all there they all are. So clouds just drift about in the game, and uh, I wouldn't worry too much about their placement because they're going to move anyways. What else we got? Yeah, I think that's just about it. Let's see. Covered, uh, oh, okay, barbed wire. I need more barbed wire. Otherwise, it doesn't look like a battlefield, yeah? We need some, all oh, that, those dunes really tie the scene together. So, another thing is stacking. So, I've not done any work on, I want this, you know, gravestone to be on top. Um, what you can do is just, you know, remove and then append a new one and then stick it there. You know, plus minus would be the thing to work in, but ugh, I haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, what else? We got some trees. W for, because T was taken for tank. So, you know, you can place all the palm trees your heart desires. And, uh, uh too many. Let's, uh, trim, call the trees a little bit. Um, structures as well. So let's say, uh, this is cakewalk. So, oh, wait a minute. There is a landing pad in the middle. Did I miss that in the original game? Hang on. Oh, maybe that's a bug. Well, there's a landing. Let's say we want to make another landing pad. Uh, so you can, again, just create one. Click. There you go. It's neutral. So theoretically, the enemy helicopter could go for it too. Landing pads are always open to all helicopters. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty well it. The windows you can move around. You can dismiss this one. So, you know, once you've read it all, there you go. Oh, and uh, moving things. So, yeah. I, Unlikely, but if you want to, you know, push pixels around, you can use the arrows, arrow keys to do that on a selected thing. Oh, and uh, bunkers. Let's say I want this to be owned, make it more clear, uh, by the enemy. Uh, so you can use uh, greater than, less than, click, and there you go. So now that's an enemy unit as opposed to one of ours. So that's kind of setting the friendliness. This will bring up, once you've dismissed it, the help window, that closes it. And then finally, if you want to play your, you know, test your work, right? You open it in a new window. It now shows custom level in the dropdown. Choose your difficulty and hit start.
Now it's not super clear that I did anything here, so let's uh, let's come back here and make it really obvious. Let's put. <laughs> I'm not sure if this will. Let's see if this will work. I haven't really tested this yet. Um, let's put two of these, and we'll mark them. It's not visible. I should fix that so that they're enemy. Oh, there they go. Well, they're not supposed to shoot at the demo helicopter within the editor, but uh, that's working. Okay, I need to fix that. But uh, let's see if that works in the actual game. There we go. So now you're playing against the, you know, testing the level you just created. So, uh, for the time being, I'm doing terrible things. I'm putting the data in the URL. But what's kind of fun is about about this is you can just see the, the data, the coordinates, and you could send this to a friend like, hey, I just made this level in Armor Alley, you know, you want to try it out, here you go. Uh, so the other aspect of this, of course, is that we can reload and then start a network game inviting a friend to play the custom level that you just made. So if I open this in a new tab, and then I say, ready, and we come back, lost my tab, here, I'm now playing a custom level, and now you see we're player versus player by default, so I'm now playing the enemy helicopter over here, and then in the other tab, I fall behind a bit, but now, yeah, we'll catch up. Fast forwarding frames here, I should mention to catch up. You know, playing a network game of a custom level that I just made against the friend. So that's kind of fun. And you can play co-op too, I should be clear. So you don't have to be going up against each other. Okay, that's the level editor. All right, it wouldn't be a proper demo if I didn't show you at least one level in Extreme and try to beat it. And I want to point out that this one, this is the last level that you'd normally play in the regular game, in the campaign. And there are, count them, 18 turrets. And playing extreme mode, those turrets will fire at tanks, ground, most ground units. And they'll also hit infantry and engineers in this mode. So this is like, we're trying to break into Fort Knox here. So this is going to be a tough one. I may or may not actually beat this. I've I've made it through this before, but it is it's a grind sometimes. The most important thing is just not to get hit, of course. So the rough strategy, one there I mean there are a few different ways to do this. Um uh, you can try to lob bombs from a distance. That's... I don't think that's very effective. Another thing you can do is to fly overhead and try to drop infantry like this. And they'll drop down, but if they hit the ground before a tank, you know, then you're in big trouble because obviously the, the tank is just going to steamroll them. So, engineers are constantly coming by, we're going to repair what's there, so this is really tricky. You can kind of try to brute force your way uh, by doing what you can, getting shot down, and these ones are close, so it's easy to sort of get back there, but you're also fighting with passive conflicts. I've got a little bit of an advantage here. Okay, this looks good. If I hang back, I'll wait. Excellent. All right. Now. Well, I've got the advantage. First mover's advantage. Let me try to take out the next group. So what I'm going to try to do, this is risky, is try to get two of those guys down. Here. Okay, one. <laughs> uh, so there's a missile, whoops, missile launcher on the way. Uh, but there's a, I'm not sure if you saw it, there's kind of a, a sneaky hidden 
landing pad over there. So if I can secure that landing pad area, then that's a great uh, area to be able to. It's a lot easier to defend something. So in fact, I'm just going to order up a convoy or two here and get that kick started. Move forward and wait. Wait for my opening. Okay. Let's drop five infantry. This is a bit dangerous because the tank's on the way. But they're going to go through. They're going to start shooting those turrets. I'm going to wait for the tank to get close enough and then try to take out the tank. Perfect. And hopefully... Close. All right, I'm sacrifice my chopper there. And then that last infantry will take out, uh, hopefully, that turret. And then that area will be much safer to deal with. And then the only sort of classic race against the clock, of course, is to get over there before the enemy gets. Uh, more engineers to the building, which that's going to start happening real soon. There we go. Just in time. So there's a kind of hidden landing pad. And you can basically say we've secured this area, which is excellent. Now, probably also want to just take this bunker. Might come in handy in case I need to suddenly dodge a missile or hide like that. So the next thing that would be really helpful is to get in one of my engineers over here to start rebuilding these turrets. And then they will fire and start taking out the oncoming enemy convoys. Uh, now there's, of course, there's another group of three up ahead. So I'm basically going to have to go through the same exercise as before. And this is going to be increasingly a challenge the further out you get and the further you are away uh, from a landing pad or you know repairs and resources and all that so i tried taking a run at this now while I've got time. of course those just got eviscerated uh, this is where it gets really tricky so I think my failure there might be I might need to come down from high up and sort of carpet bomb, which I can try. This is actually the best place to be doing that sort of repeated carpet bomb. It's a little cheap, but uh, hey, I'm not beyond that right now. I'm just trying to get an edge. <laughs> so there's, there's me lobbing bombs. I can also try uh, firing, you know, rubber chickens. I think this actually strategy actually works decently. It is just a little it's a little corny. You could be more strategic and uh, a handful of infantry if you can get them down there parachute them down are gonna be much more plus you can see the engineers showing up we're gonna repair all that stuff so if anything I want to make sure I can get the engineers. Number one down. Two. So yeah, if you're aggressive and you come down fast, you can take these out pretty effectively. Whoops. Okay, well, I'm gonna have at least one. They're gonna have one rebuilt by the time I get over there. So the last two, you see those groups, the last two, they're the engineers. On the upside, uh, our guys are also renaming stuff. gonna sit on this for a second. Let's go to town. Uh -oh. So this is where timing is really important. If you die and then you know the enemy comes along, they get the opportunity, they start repairing the turret. The turret is the domino effect. 
Turret then takes out your, you know, a tank that's over here. You lose the bunker. Um, it, it can really, the further you get through this level, the trickier it uh, gets to maintain those positions. So I have a little bit of a uh, advantage coming up because it's just a regular old bunker, and those are a lot easier to deal with than a uh, super bunker. So we'll now own that super bunker, which is nice, but if I don't get ahead of that tank, we're toast. So I'm just gonna actually let that one, you'll see. It's just gonna be taken out right away. Both of these, unfortunately, are gonna be sacrificed. So I should have just sent one to get the super bunker on our side. Uh, super bunker is also, from a strategic point of view, a great place to hide. And it just happens to be a little bit wider than the helicopter, for a very good reason. So, you can kind of hang out there and shouldn't be bothered by anything except tanks, because the tank will take you out now. This is my opportunity, so we're going to take that bunker, and once it's clear, it's something, and then we'll let them do the rest of the work. building, rebuilding on our side, which is awesome. I'm gonna hurry and don't want to lose that bunker just yet. Don't want to have the engineers rebuilding it. So that's one down. Uh, let me just refuel quickly. Subpar, but that's okay. Okay, I don't want to lose that super bunker, so I'm gonna have to blow through this. No, I'm too late. We're gonna lose the super bunker because that tank is gonna take it. Yeah, there we go. That's no longer ours. Things can change fast in this game. So we have two turrets that are really active there. That's yeah, tricky. So let's see if I can, well, wait for this tank to pass. Make sure the upcoming engineers don't repair. Whoa, whoa. They're gonna repair that bunker now for that turret. Unless I get my butt or their stat. So, of course, enemy helicopter presents another challenge. The upside is that we do have three turrets now uh, near that area. There's the rebuild. So I can wait for the R tank to hit that turret. Friendly for the moment. Super bunker. Let's just go for the turret. Lag, sorry. Too much action. Alright, well, that was a foolish idea because now all that stuff is going to be taken out by those turrets. They're going to fire at the tank. They're going to fire at the next tank. But, uh, I know that I can fire a missile. At least, if the turrets don't take out that tank, then we've got at least the one that's going there. There we go. That super bunker's safe now. So the more stuff we hold, the more stuff we control, the better. So you'll notice they don't fire at... Uh, uh, the turrets don't fire at infantry or engineers, but they can, they can take them out. Come on. All right, I'm gonna have to sacrifice these two again, but that's my, that's my problem. 
take out the tank. So I would have had to sacrifice my helicopter to take out the tank to allow the infantry to take out the turret and then that bank of three would have been gone. But timing wasn't right. This is sometimes why it's so important to have the right ammo at the right time. So another strategy I can take is sort of like screw all this, forget all this. I've got a clear line of sight. Uh, I could just sit here and fire missiles, see, all the way through. And I actually might do a little bit of this. Look, I'm in it to win it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not above that. Uh, gonna have to be careful though. So, maybe what I do is hold back, fire some more missiles, stock up, wait for the next convoy. I'm just gonna order some more infantry engineers. Make sure nobody's hurting our stuff. And then... If I time it right, we'll tap this down. No problem. I do have to make sure I take out those... ...engineers though. Ah. Gotta be careful with that. Because if I lose that super bunker, then it's a real pain to get back. So the other thing is that as long as there's a tank, it attracts the gunfire from the turret. The turret will keep the infantry, the infantry approaching infantry and engineers at bay because um, they get hit by the gunfire, which is great. But if for some reason there's no tank, then the infantry can march up to my stuff and just take it on. So, that, that's always something you gotta watch out for. So, this whole area at this point is kind of self-serving. The only thing that can really sneak by, you know, undetected, is the vans. So, at the end of this upcoming convoy, you see there's a group of, there's obviously a van in there. And the usual suspects, missile launcher, uh, tank, five infantry, two engineers, and then one last tank. And after that tank, all right, here we go. This is it. It's the dream team. Let them have it. I'll pull back. Hopefully, get on. Refuel. Get one more missile. There it goes. We got them. Not enough to hold. I'm going to lose those guys to that tank, but that's fine. That's three down. Okay, and now we get to do this again with another group of three. That's the second last one. And this one's not so hard. The last group of three, that one is super hard to get and to defend, to hold. So that's where it's going to get really tricky, I think. So, let's see what happens next. Never a dull moment. We've got some engineers on the way too, that's great. If we can hold those, uh, then we'll be in a very good spot to have excellent defense, defense against these dummies. Okay, same thing. Go, 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 go. I can be defended. This is good. This is actually kind of perfect. The only thing is those... Not quite. Close, but not quite. If I can take that... I don't have enough to take the tank, but I can sacrifice my own chopper for this. Alright, go, 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 go! <laughs> I lost my engineer there. 
Uh, but they have another shot at taking out that group of those last two guns. Turrets. So let's see. Yes. Oh, really close. Well, that's okay. See how strategic this can be. Man. Oh, son of a gun. That was a nasty carpet bombing there. And that's another thing that you have to be aware of. Sometimes the enemy chopper's coming after you, but then of course, the old saying, don't fight over your troops. There's a very good reason for that. You shouldn't be wasting ammo. Uh, on shooting tanks because they're just going to get taken out by the turrets, thankfully. Hmm. Okay, I think it's time for an actual convoy. So if I can get another five infantry, uh, we have another super bunker combination up ahead. And this is, again, the, the last group, which is... Absolutely the, the most challenging. Sorry, there's a fair bit of lag here. Not sure what's going on. So the only thing I'm really concerned with here is the uh, engineers and the enemy chopper. to do something ill advised. Okay. If we can get one on the ground, that's a good start. Even, even for a little bit. Oh yeah, don't run into those. Hey! There's our troops. Okay. So, we're in a good spot to take another run. that group. Just watch out for the enemy chopper, of course. Okay, let's take a run on it. Ah, I should have come on from high. That's gonna cost me. Yeah, the tank just took out all of those. Whoops. Van. I'm doing it. I don't know if we're going to make it that far, but might as well be optimistic, you know? We should take it back. The van. Just for visibility purposes. Uh, uh, uh. I don't think so. Try flying high. It's dangerous, but uh, that gives some delay. So I've got at least two down, which is great. I'm also damaged. Hell, so I'm gonna run back. Damage the turret too. That's good. Usually those get shot. So, ugh. Big convoy coming now. I had better start. Oh, they re enabled a turret. Need to hurry up. I got lazy. That would be the end of that convoy. So, super key to take that out. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to lose all that stuff. Um, because there are more tanks than mine. And, yeah, that stuff is gone. Maybe I can get the infantry. That would actually be excellent. If I can get over there... Never mind. No, they're gone. 
But if I get another shot at the five. So I've got a full five infantry. Great. Got an engineer there. That's fantastic. Give him a little hand. Take another run. Not great. That was... I shouldn't have done that. But... Oh. Could have just lobbed bombs over. The other option, and something I haven't really tried, is just flying as fast as you can overhead, top of the screen, and then trying to fire missiles when you get over the other side. Whoops. Um, so that's also a an option. While dropping bombs. Potentially dangerous too, especially when you're further out at this point in the game. Alright. Potentially good. I can hold this. Sure what's left. Let's go see. Oh. Oh, it didn't really work. Uh, one is really damaged, but everybody else is in trouble and I'm out of ammo. So, unfortunately, that group is gone. Oh, oh. be a good time to get, get over that one. See if I can drop some more stuff. Nope. I did damage on the first two, but not enough. So, yeah, here's a great example of some of the challenges of this game when you get out to the basically what was the last level in the original. Just seeing how challenging it is. So I've got one infantry. You always get one with a helicopter. Two now. So let's wait for this next group to pass. take another run at it. Maybe from high this time. Shoot. Lost the missile. And the infantry because I got in the way of the gunfire. Or them to fire in that direction. Ugh. Okay. I was trying to hit that tank. So that's the other danger, is that if, and this has bitten me before, if a missile's chasing you and you die, you take out the tank, which is good, but then the missile, of course, makes a beeline for whatever the next eligible target is, which is usually one of your uh, turrets. And so, of course, it plows through whatever infantry you've just done all that work to drop. Too early. Shoot. Me. 
maybe they'll get by that and then have a shot. Yeah. So, timing again is, is key. Woof. Well, yeah, those guys are going to get hit by that end tank, I'm afraid. It was too soon. Yeah. Too bad. A little bit later and they would have had a shot at it. Now, something interesting here is I've got five, so I'm going to run for it. No. No. That might be interesting. And hey, I've got the super bunker now. I don't know how that worked, but okay. Let's run for it. So, first thing, fire the missiles. So that's going to take out one. Then I can get close. And I know that I can drop more. You can fire me all day. That's just fine. As long as I keep the tanks away. Yes. Perfect. Okay. That's awesome. Now, it'd be nice to be able to rebuild that. Uh, shoot some of this stuff somewhere. Well, that's good enough for now. Head back, refuel. Oh, damn it. I just lost the super bunker. See, yeah, this is what complacency will do. That is, that is my fault. I actually might have to throw the towel in on this, but let's see. Wow. Well. Ugh. Took out one. Clearly what I'm doing is not effective. So let's try it again. We got time now. Wait for the enemy chopper to come. And go. Man. Okay. Sorry about the jumping. Alright, two missiles, great. Do. The other option you can do, uh, which I'm going to do now, because I think I've got those guys, is to take out the um, enemy, uh, steal funds from the enemy, from the end bunker. Alright, well that's good enough. Maybe one of those infantry will get through. Nope. Okay. Working on two now. Gotcha, though. Alright. I'm gonna go do something dangerous. Let's steal some funds from the enemy. Why not kick them all down? Because, uh, yeah. Screw those guys. Sure, I got anything there. Not sure what happened either. The next thing I want to do. Great. Yes. Thank you. That's now ours. 
is go steal some damn money, because they must pay. Um, the next thing I should probably do is just order a whole bunch of tanks. I'm kind of broke, so I should go... Oh, really? Okay, van's on the way. Uh, let me just fire everything I got missile-wise then, and if we are very, very lucky, I don't think so. Let's see. Let's see. If I can hold that, we're gonna win. No, we're too far away. That van is gone. Oh, that's too bad. We were five seconds back. I would have had it. But almost won the game there. So, I own all the turrets. All the guns. Mine are mine. Which means I can hide. Well, if there was a van in this group, that would be it. It'd be game over. So, I'm just gonna say that this is it. So I'm rolling through now. That's mine. And I'm going to uh, have some recycled units too, which is nice. So that's extra money. I've got a good convoy coming up now, so it's the end stretch. I can feel it. Here we go. Feeling good about this one. I mean, if this doesn't make it through, then, you know, something is wrong. Or, you know, bad luck. Doing a demo and not supposed to win. Demo gods don't approve. Could be anything. I try to defend the vans from shrapnel. Because they're, ex they're extremely vulnerable. Um, yeah, everything. They, it's the weakest, the weakest vehicle in the game. So, let's try to shield them. Yeah, you yeah, see what I mean? Ugh. Oh, sucks. We got three here, so hopefully that's sufficient. Yeah, we got this. Come on. Come on. Five, four, three, two, one. There it is. Finally. Coordinates are a little off there. But, there it is. I have won the battle. And now I get to, after all that, I can click and I can make my own fireworks. Isn't that nice? Okay. That is Midnight Oasis on Extreme Mode. It took only... Yeah, it only took me an hour and almost 15 minutes. I'm sure it will take you less time. <laughs> so, yeah, best of luck. I recommend you play it on the easy levels first and then try your hand. It can be really frustrating, but also really fun.